solving linear systems and this time we're going to look at how do you determine how many solutions there will be just by simply looking at the system of equations. This happens to be the last in the solving linear systems in the Nelson book. It's 1.7 if you're following that book but um, somehow I think it should have been the first one because that way you might have a better understanding on how this all works. But needless to say, here we go and we'll explain it all and make sure that um, you've got it all figured out and you can do any of the homework questions. So what do we know about linear systems now? We've solved using graphing, substitution, elimination, and now um, we want to know just by looking at them how many solutions will there be. So you do know that what's important here is the slope and the y-intercept. We want to know whether or not these two lines, let's make a little picture up here, we want to know whether they're parallel lines like this, which would be no solution. We want to know whether they cross at some point, which is any two lines. And remember from grade nine, as long as the slope, uh, you have the same slope and a different y-intercept or different slopes, they will cross in one place. And then the other option is that they're actually the same line, so they're on top of each other. So there are multiple of one another. So looking at this equation here, um, I can see that this equation, 3c, 1d equals 4, 6c, 2d equals 8. And by quick inspection, I can tell that this equation here is simply two times this one. Now make sure you're looking at every term. So three times two is six, one times two is two, four times two is eight. So this, if this is equation one, this is equation two, and equation two is two times equation one. So that means they are actually the same line, <clears throat> sorry, same line, and there will be an infinite number of solutions. Okay, so sometimes we'll just say infinitely many solutions or an infinite number of solutions, but you get the point. They're exactly the same line, like that. Maybe the slope is different. I don't know. I just sketched it quickly. <coughs> okay, so the second equation, oh, this was 2, that's 4. This was a 1, that's 2. So this is 2 times that one and 2 times this one, but 2 times 3 isn't 0. So the second best way of checking, once you've seen that it's not um, like just a common multiple, is to write it into y equals mx plus b format. So if I were to rewrite this equation into y equals mx plus b, so I bring the 2y over here, it's minus 2y, so I'd say 2y equals 4x, and y is equal to 2x. So this is equation 1. Now, if I look at equation 2 and I bring the y to the other side, equation 2 would become y equals 2x, bring the 3 over here and the y over there, 2x minus 3. So if I were to graph these two lines, y equals 2x has a y-intercept of 0 and a slope of 2, so up 2 over 1, so it would be something like this. Whereas this one has the same slope, but a different y-intercept, we're starting it at minus 3. So same slope, which means it's going to go just like this. Parallel lines. We sometimes denote them like that, right? So parallel lines. So this would be no solution. Of course, they're trying to get you to find all the different types. So you can guess that they're all going to be different. Well, at least three of them. And this one, x plus 5y equals 9, x minus y equals 3. So they're not multiples of one another. So I want to put them into y equals mx plus b format. So equation 1 is going to become 5y equals minus x plus 9, divided by 5, minus 1 fifth x plus 9 over 5. And the other equation, equation 2, is going to be, I'm bringing this over here, so it's going to give me y equals x minus 3. 
So I've got the 3 over here and the y over there. So these have different slope, different slope, different y-intercept. So it's going to be one solution. Okay, so we've done infinite, no solution, one solution. So what's this one going to be? Well, a quick inspection, we'd say, well, this is 1 times 3, 2 times 3 is 6, minus 7 times 3 is not minus 14. So make sure you check all of them. Don't make that mistake. And I'm going to label the equations so you can follow me. So I'm going to say 2y equals negative x plus 7. So divide by 2. So you have y equals mx plus b format. And the second equation is going to be, uh, let's say we've got 6y equals minus 3x plus 14. I divide by 6, so that's minus 3 over 6x plus 14 over 6. Oh, that looks the same as this one, doesn't it? Let's reduce our fractions so we get a better idea. Minus 1 half x and 14 over 6. Don't make the mistake of thinking it's the same as 7 over 2. It would be 7 over 3. So they have the same slope and different y-intercepts. So they would both be going... Let's make a quick sketch. So the y-intercept is 7 halves. So that's 3 and a half. 1, 2, 3 and a half. And this one has... 2 and 1 third, right? So it would be here. And the same slope, down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. So they would be both going like this, like that. So no solution because they're parallel lines. Okay, so another option in a kind of test question or something, they might ask you to use an equation such as this. To write another equation that will create a linear system with no solution, one solution, infinitely many solutions. So remember that a linear system means that you have to have two equations. So this is one equation here. You're to write the second, second equation. So if there's no solution, then they have to have the same slope but different y-intercept. So it's probably a good idea for you to rewrite this equation. I'm going to write it as 3y equals minus 2x plus 6. So all I did was move the, min the 2x over here. And I'm going to divide by 3. So minus 2 thirds x plus 2. So that's my equation. Now if I want to write... Um, a system, another equation that has no solution, I want the same slope. So I'm going to start with, this is going to be my equation one, and my other equation with no solution for this system is going to be I keep the same slope and I change the y-intercept. You could have put a zero here, you could have put any number that you wanted because they would have the same slope, different y-intercept, so that's no solution. Okay, now if I want it to have one solution, all I want to do, I can use the first equation. Again, we're just going to keep that one we've already written in, in y equals mx plus b format. And if I want one solution, all I have to do is change the slope, right? So you can write up any equation. You could change the slope and the y-intercept. Anything you want. I'm just going to change the slope. I'm going to make it positive 2 thirds x plus 2. So all you're looking to do is change the slope. Change the slope. Okay, and then you have one solution. Okay, and the final one, infinitely many solutions. Well, we looked at that up here, this one way at the top here. We said it was the same line because it was just a multiple of the first line. So if I take, I'm going to go back to the, the first, um, first writing of the equation. 
It doesn't have to be in y equals mx plus b format because when I put it in that format, I had a fraction. I don't want to deal with that. So I'm going to make another equation that's going to be the same line. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to multiply it by 3. So 3 times 2 is not 3. 6x times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. And 3 times 6 is 18. So you can see that this equation that I, you, you're making up this one, right? Every second equation, those are the ones you made up. The first one was the original equation. So now I just have an equation that's equation 1 times 3. And now I have an infinite number of solutions. And that wraps up the whole grade 10 curriculum on solving linear systems. The next um, chapter is going to be on analytic geometry. And it's kind of a fun little romp through analytic geometry. You'll love it. It's easy. Okay, guys, hope this is helping you out. Make sure to subscribe, tell your friends, share the, the resource, and help the channel grow by supporting it through subscribing. Bye for now.